Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be making pork belly burnt ends slash bacon bites slash pork belly bites slash candied bites slash candied bacon <laughs> Hi everyone, this is James from Barbecue.com and welcome back to another video. Um, we're doing another quite simple cook today, uh, pork belly burnt ends. Now, you can call them whatever you want, but for the sake of this video, we're calling them pork belly burnt ends. Uh, so these are little cubes of pork belly that you smoke for a while and then braise them down uh, with sugars and sauces and they're just sticky goodness. So they're quite an easy cook. Today we're going to do it in the Weber kettle. Uh, we're going to use the snake method just to show that you can do low and slow on your kettle. You don't need a smoker to do this. Um, so we'll show you how that's all set up and we'll talk you through the cook and we'll have some tasty bites at the end of it. So there's not a lot of prep work involved with pork belly burnt ends. So the first thing you want to do is get your barbecue set up so you can let your temperature stabilize while you get the pork belly ready. So we're using the snake method in the 57cm Weber kettle today. Um, I've gone for a 2x2 two two snake because we cook these at a slightly higher temperature, they're around 130-135 degrees Celsius. So 2x2 two two snake. Um, I also have then about 10 briquettes in the little portable Weber chimney started to get going. Uh, if you're not sure about setting up your barbecue for low and slow, I have a video on it. Um, already how to set up a snake and how to do low and slow on your kettle so we'll link that in the little i card up in the corner uh, but for now we'll go ahead and get this lit and get the lit coals tipped out and get the snake up to temperature and get it stabilized While the barbecue is coming up to temperature we can go ahead and get the pork belly ready. Now, I've just been to Hillstown Farm Shop and picked up this pork belly. It's from their rare breed uh, middle white pig so it's a really good quality pork belly. So we're using two Angus Noik rubs today. Uh, we're using sweet bones and butts and the general. So those two should give us a nice mix of flavours. Uh, so we'll get the cubes seasoned up and get them onto the barbecue so we can get that first stage of smoking done. <laughs> Here's the pork belly. I've removed the, the rind from the top of it. So I've left the, the fat cap on. Um, some nice marbling in through the bottom of it now. So uh, pork belly is really nice. There's a nice mixture of sort of leaner meat and then the more marbled meat in it as well. So if you can't get it in a full slab like this, you can buy the pork belly slices, uh, which tend to be sort of just thin strips of pork belly. Um, they're not ideal because you can't decide what size of chunk you want, but if it's all you can get, it's all you can get. So for this here, what you want to do is cut it into cubes. So just using a sharp knife, um, you want to go slightly over an inch. So something maybe around there. Uh, and just cut down through. Once you have it all cut into longer strips then the next thing to do is make it into cubes. So again they're roughly the same distance. Just cut down through so they're in sort of large cubes. These will shrink down quite a bit whenever you're smoking them so you make them slightly bigger than bite size and they will shrink down to a more manageable size. <laughs> Once you have them all cut up into cubes then, the last thing to do is add the seasonings. So again we're using uh, Angus and Oink, Sweet Bones and Butts and the General. Um, so those are the two rubs we're going to use today. So we'll go on first with the Sweet Bones and Butts and then give it a coating of the General. Now that they're all rubbed up, there's one last thing to do uh, before we get them onto the barbecue. 
if you have a wire rack, you can set them all out onto the wire rack to make them easier to lift on and off, so you're not lifting individual pieces. However, I don't have one, so the way I do it is I thread them onto a skewer and keep them well spaced out because you want to get smoke around all sides of them. Um, just push the skewers through. maybe leave about an inch gap between them so thread them all on that'll make them a lot easier to lift on and off the barbecue um, so your lid isn't open for as long so you're going to hold that temperature better so once you have them all skewered up then the last thing to do is get them onto the barbecue uh, our temperature is sitting pretty steady around that sort of 125 to 130 degrees celsius range so uh, the key thing with a kettle barbecue as I said is getting them on as quick as possible and getting the leg closed again uh, they're not quite as sealed as a smoker would be so the, if you light that snake up too quickly you'll struggle to get your temperatures back down so we're gonna go ahead put these on uh, we're also then gonna add a few chunks of the cherry wood so we're gonna add two at the start of the snake uh, and we're gonna smoke these for a few hours then before we actually put them into the braising liquid and get them uh, tendered down um, I've added the ThermoQ Wi-Fi, uh, I'm only using this to keep a track of the pit temperatures, I'm not really taking an internal, an internal reading of the, the pork belly at the minute, so we'll go ahead, get them on, get the leg closed up and then we're not going to touch them for a few hours until they take on that nice smoke flavour. <laughs> While those are doing their thing, um, I thought I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, smoking on a kettle. So since the last uh, Q&A session we've done, um, I've got a few questions about if you can get the same results in the kettle as you can on a smoker. So hence the reason why today I wanted to do this on the kettle rather than the smoker, because as long as you um, know that there are slight differences between doing it on a kettle and doing it on a smoker, then you can still get great results with it. Um, it's definitely it's the way I learned to do it. Uh, I started out on my kettle uh, for ages before I got my, uh, my smoker. So there's just slightly different setups. Again, I'll link that video in the, the description below for how to set up your kettle for low and slow. Um, as I said, the key is to keep the lid on as much as possible. Once you get that temperature stabilized, uh, you take the lid off, the air all rushes in and that snake lights up far too fast then you're just fighting a losing battle trying to get them temperatures back down again. So uh, as for vent set up, on that 2x2 two two snack, uh, the vents at the bottom are open maybe around a quarter to a third. Uh, once I started up to temperature, um, you knock them vents down to that and that steadies things off. Uh, the top vent is mostly open, it's closed a little bit but it's pretty much open. So the other thing you might want to consider then is the fact that you're as that snake burns out around the kettle, um, the number of lit briquettes is increasing or moving around the kettle, so you might need to move your food or your cooking grate uh, to compensate for that, so the snake doesn't end up lighting underneath your food. Now if you're doing smaller things like this, it's not such a big deal, but larger sort of briskets or pork butts, they take up quite a bit of that cooking grate, and it's the one downfall of doing it on a kettle, is you don't have as much distance between the heat source and the, the meat where it's sitting on the cooking grate. So you just need to be wary of it. Um, as that snake lights around, maybe rotate the cooking grate slightly to keep the food as far away from it as possible. But other than that, there's really not much else to it. It's just a matter of doing it and practicing. Pork belly burnt ends is a great one to start with. I'd also recommend pork shoulder. Um, they're great, they're a little bit more forgiving when, if your temperatures are varied up and down. The first few times you try it, they are gonna go up and down, but. Don't panic about it too much, it's not the end of the world. Just think about what you've done. If you do eventually get them stabilized, make a note of where your uh, your vents were, top and bottom, how many briquettes you have in it, and then just do the same thing next time. So there's nothing else to it. So we'll let those smoke away for another couple of hours, and then we'll come back and we'll get the 
butter and the sugar and the honey into them and we'll start to get them all sticky and sweet. <laughs> So now the pork belly burnt ends have been on for just over two hours, taking on some smoke. It's time to get them into a tray uh, and we're going to cover them with a few other things. So we have some brown sugar, uh, butter and this is actually honey from uh, a beekeeper who lives about a mile up the road from me. So it's nice local honey, I think it'll go quite well with them. So all you need to do is slide. chunks of pork belly off the skewers into a tray. They've taken on a really nice colour. Quite squidgy already. It's all nice. So the so first thing to go in with then is the light brown sugar. I'll just shake that over. Again, the key thing for this is sweetness. This is about half a cup of light brown sugar. Next, <coughs> we'll go in with a drizzle of the honey. So, that good drizzle all over. Again, more sweetness. It really helps with the fattiness of the pork belly. So, a good couple of tablespoons there. Try and get this back into the jar if you make the mess. Yeah, sort of like that. Okay, and then the last thing is butter. So more fat. There will be plenty of fat cooks out of these, but we still add a little bit more just because it's the bit that tastes good. So there's roughly about 200 grams of butter. And that's it. Just give it a quick mix through. Make sure everything's coated. And like I say. These will, there will be plenty of fat cooks out of these and actually creates the braising liquid plus once the butter melts down as well. So we'll just make sure everything's sitting nice and then we'll go ahead and cover it with tin foil. So that's that ready to go back onto the barbecue. Just remember to keep it away from the direct heat of the snags, keep it to the opposite side of the cooking grate uh, and maintain your temperatures. You can let them creep a little bit higher now but you don't want them going too high so try and stay within that maybe 135 to 145 uh, temperature range. These have been wrapped in the tray for just over three hours now. So that was around two hours of smoke, or just over two hours of smoke, just over three and a half hours in the tray, covered in foil with all that sugar and honey and butter. And this is an incredibly Weight Watchers friendly recipe. So the next thing we need to do is take the, the burnt ends out of this pan uh, and get rid of all that excess liquid and then there's only one more stage to it which is to add the sauce and put them back onto the barbecue to let that sauce set up. So the easiest way to do it is just to remove them with some tongs. <laughs> so sweet. Okay, 
So we'll set them to the side for a second. And the last thing we have to do is get rid of all this liquid. So we'll stick on a pair of gloves because it's still hot. Pour it right into a bowl to get rid of it. The smell is amazing. So once that excess liquid's gone, you can add these back into the same tray. And the last days then is to add some sauce. So for this one, we're using the uh, Smoking Yankees Apple and Whiskey Barbecue Sauce. So I'm going to leave links down in the description. You can get in touch with Mike and he'll be able to tell you where exactly this is on sale or he might be able to sort you out with some bottles of it. But check out the links in the description for that. So go ahead and add plenty of the sauce. That bottle done. Um, give them a quick toss around just to make sure they're off with it. The smell of that sauce is awesome. Perfection. So Spread them out through the tray. I'm going to stick these back onto the barbecue for another maybe 10 minutes or so just to uh, leave them uncovered. You want the sauce to set up nicely on them. So we'll put them back onto the barbecue and we'll come back in 10 minutes, let them cool down, and then we're going to eat them. to try them. Uh, what, what, I don't know why I'm picking what one because I'm literally going to eat them all anyway. So I'll go with this one here. They're so sticky. Mm. Unbelievable. That sauce is amazing. Yankees guys, well done. Uh, was, World class. They're so sweet. They're so juicy. Oh, they're... Give them a try. If you haven't tried much slow and slow, this is a perfect one to do in the kettle and a perfect one to try as your first go. Oh, pork belly is so underrated. Most people don't think they like it because it's so fatty. But whenever it's cooked like this, nice and low, uh, it renders out a lot of that fat and it just turns to jelly. You would expect them to be chewy with so much fat in them, but they're not. They're just so good. So I'm gonna go and demolish the rest of these. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about uh, using your kettle for low and slow, I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, so give the video a thumbs up. If you like the channel, please give it a subscribe. I'm um, hoping to do a bit more cooking on it now and show a bit more smoking in the kettle, plus uh, a few other different recipes as well. So, sorry, I'm a bit distracted. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.